Today we are going to answer two questions. What is a key bed and why are key beds important when considering your next keyboard? First, what is a key bed? On keyboard instruments, the key bed is traditionally known as the rail which serves to stop the downward movement of the key. All keyboards have a key bed of some type and it's essential that the rail be as close to perfectly straight as possible to ensure the travel of each key is consistent across the entire instrument. On traditional acoustic pianos, the key bed is almost always made of a solid or multiple ply hardwood. It includes a bumper, usually a thick felt material to eliminate the thump when the key reaches the bottom of its travel. So just like this model right here, you see this piece of felt, it's stopping the key from hitting the wood beneath it. Other instruments have employed different materials for the key bed. For example, the Rhodes Electric Piano's key bed was an aluminum bar with a plastic bumper, which interestingly was manufactured by Wurlitzer for several years. Even synth action keyboards, which replace traditional weights with a spring return mechanism, have a stop bar, which is often made of plastic. Now, we get to another question. Now that we know what key beds are, why are they important? And why are they important when considering what your next keyboard is? In recent years, the term key bed has evolved a bit, and it's been used more generally to describe the entire piano action, including the keys, the weights, the different mechanisms below the keyboard, as opposed to just the rail under the keys, like with a traditional piano or with a Rhodes. If you think of the key bed as describing the entire action of the keyboard, as I said, then it's perhaps the most important consideration when shopping for a keyboard. The key bed would then include things like the feel weight of the keys, either fully weighted, semi-weighted, or unweighted keys. And you can see that here with the model here, which is of course from a grand piano, which has a weighted feel, of course, like that. And then right here is the modern equivalent in a keyboard, and this is actually a Roland cutaway model. And this is trying to mimic the same feel that a grand piano has. And you can even see the mechanism inside. It also includes the action of the keys themselves, which can have hammer action, which again is replicating like the hammer on the key of an acoustic piano. You can see that if you look again at the Roland model, you can see it says hammer action on the side. So it's again replicating that hammer action of a grand piano. It could also have graded action, which is also called scaled or progressive action, which means the feel of the keys are heavier in the lower end and lighter in the top end of the keyboard like an acoustic piano. And in the Roland model, the, you can see that it says it's hammer action, but it also says progressive hammer action. And you'll find that with different keyboard uh, companies, some will call it scaled, some will call it progressive, some will call it graded. It essentially means the same thing. And if you think of it as graded, it's because there are grades of weight to each key that go heavier from the bottom and then get lighter as you go up the piano. The key bed also includes the escapement mechanism, and that is a mechanism on a piano, on an acoustic piano, that allows the hammer to fall away from the string after the key is pressed. So I wanna show you that quick with the model that we have here. So you can see when you press a key, so if you're thinking that this is the string, the hammer is not touching the string anymore. If there was no escapement mechanism, this would happen. The hammer would just stay against the string and the string would never resonate, you'd never get a sound. So the hammer, once it strikes, is actually detached, see? So that's the escapement mechanism. And digital pianos, they try to replicate that same thing. And on this model here, again, you can see there's an escapement which reproduces also the key clicks that are unique to grand piano, because that escapement mechanism creates a unique feel and even sound of the key when it's played. Key bed also includes the style or even the texture of the key, of the surface of the key. So that could be whether they are full-size keys, like on an acoustic piano, mini keys, which are smaller, waterfall keys, which is a style of key you commonly find on an organ, or have a special feel like synthetic ivory touch. The key bed could also have aftertouch, which is a function that allows you to continue pressing down on the keys after you have initially struck them to generate another sound or effect. So, and I've actually gotten the opportunity to go to our service department here and talk with some of the experts back there that repair key beds. It's literally their job to gut a piano and look at everything that's inside and they know how to fix it, which amazes me. But one of the guys was showing me that a lot of the keyboards, there's a strip underneath 
and there's usually like, I think like a little piece of, of fabric under there that feels a different gradients of how much weight you put down. So that's what gives you that aftertouch feature. Keybeds, which again include the actual keyboard and its various mechanisms, are often designed by companies other than the keyboard manufacturer who design the keyboard's body or shell, the I.O., and the controls. If you know anything about keybeds, you've probably heard of the name Fatar before. Fatar is one of the largest keybed manufacturers in the world and very common to find in a lot of keyboards. Their products can be found in the keyboards of many of the world's largest keyboard brands. For example, the Studio Logic Sledge 2.0 synthesizer, which is also a Fatar brand of keyboard, contains the Fatar TP9S keybed. But many other keyboards use that exact same keybed model, including models by Nord, Dave Smith, Korg, Kurzweil, Moog, Novation, and Roland. As you can see, keybeds are very important to talk about, and there's a lot to talk about with keybeds, especially since they have evolved and the term has evolved since the traditional instruments, since the acoustic instruments, and into modern ones. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. Please remember you can comment below with any thoughts you have. Thanks so much for watching. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Click here for more videos like these, or start at Sweetwater for all your music instrument and pro audio needs.